my typical profit is actually ninety thousand dollars uh, per house, and that's because I negotiate short sales. That's the topic of our conversation, uh, you know. And I do that by working directly with the homeowner and the lender. These are not with realtors on the MLS. I don't go to the MLS looking for a listing that says short sale. What it is is I work with the homeowner, and then I negotiate directly with that lender. Welcome to the Jennifer J. Hammond Podcast. Jennifer is a licensed realtor, educator, speaker, and best-selling author. Jennifer's goal is to help you find your yay in every day. Uh, and everything. So now we'll just do maybe one quick one for our, our wholesalers who say, David, I don't put 70000 into a house to rehab it. And it's like, okay, fine. If you don't want to do that, then here's an example of a quick wholesale uh, one. Um, the story is that there was a hundred or $88,000 federal tax lien on this house. Uh, okay. And so they had some situations not getting into that too much with it, but I was able to remove that. OK, it can get removed from the house. People don't know that. OK, uh, and so this was a house that I put twenty two hundred dollars in it that I fixed a squeaky floor and I had to pay a little bit of utilities. But essentially, I wholesaled it. I didn't really do anything. I sold it for two hundred forty thousand dollars. OK, didn't do anything in it. Uh, it was a cash offer. I could have got more. But, you know, I just basically wholesaled it for, for a cash offer. Okay, so so what do you think that I paid for that? I sold it for two forty. Uh, mm. So I I'm going to guess a hundred thousand. One hundred fifty-eight. Wow, I made eighty thousand dollars wholesale, but very good. You got the right attitude. But you know, so most people wholesale houses for five, ten, yeah. you know, thousand dollars. All my wholesales are eighty thousand. Most of my rehabs are one hundred fifty thousand. But so this uh, is we'll, a combination of two different things, though, because it's a short sale, but it was also a wholesale. So yes. Um, Right. realizing that you can, for those of us who are real estate investors, you know, we're talking about all sorts of different strategies. And one thing that often people forget is that you can actually combine strategies, just like you were saying with short selling, and then not, not necessarily having to short sale and rehab and then resell. You can also short sap and short, get a short sale. You get a hold of it, you get control of it. And then of course you can wholesale it to another real estate investor. So one question I'm going to ask you before you go on to this is, um, is so for you, how do you find the, the cash buyer, the next person? Where is that uh, located for you? Do you keep well, your own list of, of real estate investors and people who would be interested? Uh, yes. But um, you know, I, that's the thing that people uh, need to understand in a short sale. You need to, buy the house. You need to have cash. And so you need to take ownership because they have approved the buyer and the buyer cannot change. Okay. Now, uh, that house I paid 33900 for and sold for two hundred five. Do you think it was very hard to, uh, you know, for me to find the money to borrow? Because th let me rephrase the cash. Uh, all real estate contracts allow you to get a loan. OK, so even though you say on the contract you're buying cash, when you come to closing on a short sale, you can have a lender on that. OK, so do you think it was very hard for me to get a loan for thirty three thousand nine hundred? It was really easy. Now, I happen to have thirty three thousand nine hundred laying around because I've been doing short sales a lot. Um, but uh, quite honestly, Jennifer, I still do. Um, put a private lender on my houses. Uh, and that's a real estate strategy that is another topic, but because uh, I don't use my own cash, I want it ready to go uh, in the bank at all times uh, with it and stuff. But, you know, you can get a loan on a short sale, uh, you know, to be able to do that uh, and stuff. But that's that's a very good uh, question. Now, that's why one another reason why I really just only do five to 10 a year because I'm rehabbing. That's a lot of work to rehab 10 yeah. houses a year. If I were to wholesale all my short sales, I could do a lot more short sales. It's just that, you know, um, I like to rehab, or at least I did until I started teaching people short sales. Now I'm cutting my rehabs down to five a year because I, I'm, I've got students uh, all over the United 
United States and I love teaching them uh, and, and stuff. And, and so, you know, there is one important document people need to, to have to do that. OK, uh, you know, and it lets you take control of the bank. So it's very important for people to understand that the, that the seller has to authorize them. And then then you're able to take over the entire thing with the bank. And that takes the burden off of the seller. The, the bank quits calling the seller, yelling at him for not making payments. You step in as a as a an agent, not a realtor, not a real estate agent, but rather as a short sale processor agent. You deal with the bank. The bank loves you, okay, uh, and stuff. And so if you text the word short to my phone number, tap the profile, whatever, you know, I can send you that document. Uh, you know, so anyway, you know, uh, I got, like I said, I can't go through all this, but this is a little bit on marketing. Okay. How, you know, how you find them uh, just real quickly. What's important, Jennifer, is that uh, in all United States, they have to post the legal description and the, the name and address of the person in a legal newspaper in the county where the house is located. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, a, you know, www foreclosure me, catch me, send me this dot com uh, websites. I'm talking about the county that you have the property in has what's called a legal newspaper. It's where they post government contracts, divorces, lawsuits, and uh, foreclosures. And that's where you find uh, these people is in that county newspaper. So we target those people, okay? Uh, you know, they're desperate because they're gonna lose the house. Um, you know, they're willing to provide anything to help you stop the foreclosure. Uh, you know, they could, you know, they, they've had plenty of time to try to find a buyer, uh, you know, to try to sell their home. They haven't been able to do it. Uh, they also don't expect to get any money from the sale. So that's, you know, kind of nice from that perspective. Uh, you know, your goals are aligned with the seller and with the bank because you're going to get the bank paid off, uh, you know, um, you know, they get more time in the house. You stop the foreclosure, they get to live for three months, six months, nine months, and they're not making any house payments. So they get to save up that money and start over. Okay. Um, you know, you've got methods to help satisfy what the lender needs. Uh, you'll get everything that they need from the borrower directly. Uh, you know, you, you have a buyer, one of your entities, you know, you have a buyer for the house with cash. Uh, they get money to move from the bank. Uh, you know, they get paid, the bank gets paid off. Uh, we probably don't have time to go through how to do this. Um, probably, you know, this might be a good point. Um, I just fly through these. Um, yeah. So yeah, we don't really have time to go through that. Uh, well, go ahead. Would you share one of those examples? I saw you have a website. What was the one? Sure. Website oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. In the bigger presentation, I go through about eight slides of how to log on, how to get it and how to find them. Okay. We yeah. don't have time to go through all that, but in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. It's called Missouri lawyers, uh, You go to, uh, you know, M O L A W. Well, Y E M, -M, -M O lawyers, media.com. Go to that website. <laughs> yeah. Uh, spell lawyers, say, right? <laughs> yeah. How do you spell lawyers? L A W Y E R S. Uh, go there for St. Louis and surrounding area. Uh, like that. And then on that website, uh, you'll be able to see where they have trustee sales. Uh, and so um, you would go to that and then you could you could drill down to zip codes if you'd like to, or you could choose St. Charles County, uh, Jefferson County, you know, whatever counties that are in that particular area. Now, Missouri Lawyers Media, if you see, they've got probably 95 counties. OK, now they're not going to cover our people in Texas you know, uh, you know, or, or, uh, you know, New York or other places. And so you can always contact me to find out where that's at, uh, with it and stuff. Um, I also have a monthly Q and a group coaching call to, uh, you know, on Facebook, short sale profits, uh, on Facebook. And so we go through where all those County, uh, websites are, you know, on there too. But, um, but basically, yeah, you would go to this website, uh, you would go to trustee sales, uh, for your zip code, then you would drill down into, you know, the date. So you'd want the date range, uh, you know, that you would have. I don't, this presentation doesn't have those slides in it, but uh, trustee sales is the key, Jennifer, okay, for that uh, and everything. Perfect. Um, Thank you.
Um, but then we could go into how you want to reach them. You know, uh, I don't know how much more you want to go into without, you know, having time for Q&A or anything like so, that. Yeah, I was going to say anyone right. who's in the audience, feel free to start raising your hand if you're in Clubhouse. And I'm, I've am i gotten a couple comments on uh, YouTube. I have a couple questions, but I wanted you to go ahead and just a little bit more about finding them. I love this slide that you have up um, about mailing a letter, different things that you can do to find um that. Right. That so yes. So, 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 you know, what happens is um, once you find the website, and I teach people to go directly to the source, not to necessarily buy a list because everyone complains that, um, you know, when they call, they were already foreclosed and the list was too late. And so I teach you as an entrepreneur how to go directly to the website that those people get it from originally so that you have the actual uh, posting for your county. And, and you know, you're going to have only 21 days in Missouri. Every state, it might be 90 days. There's different amounts of time. But, but you go straight there, and, okay, and then you mail them a letter. Now, I will just jump off briefly to, you know, there's two methods. There's the ones in foreclosure and then ones that are not in foreclosure. So that's a different topic. And so uh, we'll give away something really a little ninja trick for people here if they write this down. I don't have a slide on it, but and I will state that the easiest ones to work with are those that have a foreclosure date because they realize the gig is up, right? Okay, yeah. they've got to do something. They're going to be out of their house, and you can buy more time. But you know, the other way of marketing is uh, uh, is before is when they've missed a payment, but they don't have a foreclosure date. And here's how you do that, Jennifer. Okay. Uh, there's a website. Is it okay to give out uh, websites yeah, and other? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Great, Our goal great. here is to help people as much as possible with as many resources. Awesome. And again, if you have questions, feel free to raise your hand. We're about to open it up. We're going to ask Linda DeMarlar, our tax expert, some um, advice she might have on the tax side of it. And of course, anyone else who has questions both on YouTube as well as Clubhouse. But go ahead. Yeah. Please give okay. out the resource. Yeah. So, so the, I already said the f people that are in foreclosure and that's who you want to go for. Okay. Uh, because they need the most help uh, right now. But uh, you know, for those that uh, have missed a payment, but the bank has not announced the foreclosure date yet, you go to listsource.com, L I S T and then source. It's all one word. S O U R C E listsource.com. And I want you to go in there for your particular, you know, county or your zip codes of where you live. And I want you to go into mortgages. Okay. There's a place for mortgages. Okay. And I want you to choose what's called subprime loans. Okay. This would be subprime mortgages, put in subprime mortgages, and they will be able to find those mortgages in the zip codes that you put in and then give you a list of names and addresses of those people uh, and they will give you the count you know how many is in that zip code so increase your count decrease it let's say put in criteria like three bedroom uh, 1200 square foot whatever other criteria you'd like but the key is uh, subprime mortgages is the tab uh, and if you have any trouble just contact me you know and I'll show you how to do it I think I even have a little video on it somewhere but uh, I know I've got that in my uh, Facebook private Facebook group, short sale profits, but uh, you, you basically will put that uh, criteria in and then you can buy, you do have to purchase that. Uh, you can get about a thousand names for only about 250 bucks. Okay. And it may be a lot of money. So buy a hundred names, but you know, um, get a list of those people. Now, Keep in mind, they're going to have their head stuck in the sand. So you're going to have to mail five times as many letters as you would with the foreclosure people. But in all cases, Jennifer, uh, yes, you know what you see, what we're talking about is you mail them a letter. OK, now give you a perspective, Jennifer. All the success I've had is in St. Charles County. I mail 60 to 60 people a month. That's it. This isn't wholesaling 10, 15 grand a month in marketing. I mailed to 60 people a month in St. Charles County uh, and I get one. That's all I need. There's 59 a month left for somebody else. In St. Louis County, there's 300 a month. Now that's pre-pandemic. Today, there's 1,500 a month due to the CARES Act and forbearance uh, and stuff. But anyway, you mail them a letter, uh, and you say certain things on it and you wait for them to call you, uh, you know, and uh, and basically, you know, you, you're there to help them. Yeah. You just put a lot of reasons in for that. 
I, and I think that's the, the big thing I wanted as a big takeaway is that this is about figuring out a way to be a win, 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 because you're solving solutions. And again, for those who, when you don't understand something, it, it can seem so confusing and so overwhelming. And one thing I've learned in 20 plus years of real estate investing as well is that so often there is the emotion of shame or um, embarrassment when someone is facing a short sale or foreclosure or just the fact that they don't know the uncertainty has risen so much now with the pandemic even more that I think that, you know, now we're going to see even more and more people who are feeling overwhelmed and feeling incredibly emotional and upset about finances that we've never seen before. And, and I just think that now, as you said in the beginning, you know, it feels more like a mission of helping others and, you know, it's really important as a real estate investor to always be thinking about it in that, in that mindset and that viewpoint of how to do that. Um, so I'm so grateful again, David. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for being here and doing this. I want to make sure, of course, I always try to make this fully just one hour um, so that we don't take too much of um, anyone's time, but I want to go ahead and answer any questions that people have. So if you want to raise your hand and ask questions, otherwise I want to go over to Linda. Linda DeMarlar is our tax expert. And we just love, love, love having her um, when she's in here and she gives us some tax advice. So what are things that people should be considering um, on both sides of it, you know, as the real estate investor, but also as the homeowner who's going through a short sale, because as David had alluded to earlier, a lot of times they still owe the money um, that was shorted on a short sale. So Linda, what do you have to tell us? Okay, well, Congress tries to protect people that are in such a sad situation. And there are some laws where they can exclude some of the acts. They do have an actual gain, many of these people. I know it doesn't sound possible that you can have a gain when you're selling your house at below fair market value. But if just as an example, you might say somebody bought a house for a couple hundred thousand dollars and then the market went up and then they refinanced it. They took some money out. Maybe they put the money back into the house or maybe they used it to pay off car loans or credit card bills or uh, many times people take out loans on their homes to pay for their children's tuition and college and things like that. But in any case, then they get themselves into the situation where uh, the market has dropped or they've, uh, well, just like was mentioned before by David, that they have a a medical situation or they've lost their jobs, all kinds of bad things can happen to people, unfortunately, so sad. And then they have to sell the house. Okay, now what happens? They owe more money to the bank than what the house could be sold for. And that's why it's called a short sale because you're selling it for less than the amount that you owe on it. Now that money that the bank doesn't come after you for, that's considered forgiven. And when you have a, for, a debt that's forgiven, it's taxable. And many people say, wow, this is the worst of the worst of the worst. You know, I'm, I'm losing my house. I'm losing my home and, and I'm losing whatever equity they might have had in it when they made the down payment. But the government looks at it from a different point of view. They say, well, you know, when you bought this house, you got a mortgage to help you buy it. And you didn't have to pay any taxes on that mortgage. It wasn't income to you because it's assumed you'll pay it back. But then when you don't pay it back, guess what? It becomes income. And uh, unfortunately, I've seen people who received the uh, 1099 from the bank saying they now have to recapture this income and pay taxes on you know, 50,000, 100,000. Uh, a few years ago, the numbers were staggering sometimes. Now they're not quite so bad. But in any case, uh, David's coming in and he's helping these people to get out from under this horrible mess. And yes, I know what he talks about when he said that people sometimes cry at the settlement because they're so, so happy to be relieved of this horrible financial burden. So he's actually doing them a favor in so many ways. But in any case, then they don't even realize that later on they're going to get a notice from the IRS, excuse me, a notice from the bank, which is also a copy of sent to the IRS saying that now you have to pay tax on that money. Well, the good news is that if it's their home, 
there's a certain amount at one time it was two million i think they reduced it now to seven hundred and fifty thousand. so this helps people most this helps most of the people i mean if you have somebody who's dead forgiveness is more than seven hundred and fifty thousand. well good grief you know maybe they shouldn't have taken all that money out of the house to begin with um although you can't fault them for having a medical emergency or losing their jobs but there is a way around it now of course you have to fill out uh, a special tax form it's called the 982 and it's got special lines on it you fill if you fill it out properly and it was your own home there's a pretty good chance you'll be able to get out of some of the taxes but it's one of these things like don't try to do it on your own you'll need help from a, from an expert somebody who knows how to get you out of this debt forgiveness or get you into the debt forgiveness but in any case um just be aware that it might not all be all bad news in other words you might not have to pay any taxes on the amount of the short sale that at least the amount of the debt that's been forgiven i hope that sort of makes sense uh david's probably very familiar with how this works of course he's dealing from the other side of it because he's the new owner so he doesn't pick up any tax obligation other than david of course you have a wonderful tax obligation because when you sell the house finally you have a fabulous uh, game on which to pay taxes but i congratulate you for that you know they, they always say you never go broke paying tax on a gain, but actually you can if it's in a, in a short sale, if you're the seller of the house. But David's on the other side of the deal where he's making a profit, and of course he's got the funds to pay the tax on the profit. In any case, this is Linda over and out. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> and it is, that was my point, is I just wanted to make that so often people don't realize that there is a, there are tax implications um, for the the home owner who is in the short sale, but also, you know, as a as a real estate investor, of course, every time you you make money, you need you have tax implications too. But I always want to make sure we cover that topic. And then uh, John Lee, I saw you had unmuted yourself. Um, did you want? Did you have something you wanted to um, share or ask? Um, yeah, actually. Uh... Thank you, uh, David, for all this great information. I know you could go on for a long time. Thank you, Jennifer, for him. David, he's uh, he's just, he's like, he is the expert. Uh, you know, if you're in St. Louis, you ever get a chance to see him live, I would do it. Um, otherwise, I, I just had a quick question, uh, David. Uh, I just wondered on the, uh, the the attitude of the bank, has that changed over the last couple of years? And uh, do you see them maybe changing as we go forward to what, to what their process is? So thank you, I'm John. Yes, John, you know, it was the wild cowboy days, uh, you know, back in 2009 and 10. That's why so many people got out of short sales because uh, the bank would just willy nilly change what they wanted. Uh, but from, you know, 2013 on 15, 17, 19, uh, if you knew those steps like I do and, and you know, uh, and have a procedure and, and can repeat that, it was like, you know, this little, you know, Ocean's Eleven movie, you know, the oriental guy going through the laser beams to get to the vault of jewels. Uh, you know, there it is, is a process that that is very well regulated with the banks uh, currently, you know, 2019, 18, 17. And they're really very simple to do. And, and nobody knows that because they quit doing them. Now what's going to change, uh, you know, uh, John and, and Jennifer, is that the whole CARES Act forbearance ends to July 31st. 2021 forbearance ends foreclosures will start there's no if ands or buts there's no extensions uh, because the banks have been given since april of 2021 time to put in new processes and new procedures uh, and it's a 200 page document i'm only halfway through it uh, but they are basically uh, have a series of steps that they have to follow. It's taking the skeleton of what we've done in the past, but adding a few bells and whistles to it uh, because there are over 2 million people. There are five to 10 times as many, uh, you know, uh, foreclosures right now ready to happen than there was in 2019. It is 2009 all over, Jennifer. Okay, and it starts today and the banks have a process. And I'll tell you it real quick for your for your audience, okay? One, immediately, tomorrow, 
okay, August 1st, so to speak. The next day, the banks can immediately start the foreclosure process on all vacant homes. They will go first, okay? I, I've already been in on a CFPB webinar on this. Uh, even though I'm a little guy, a little, I'm a little fly on the wall, they are starting the foreclosure process. Be Whatever your state is, it might be 21 days, 30 days, okay, or wherever you're at. Uh, for on, on vacant homes first immediately. The second wave, okay, is going to be all the homes that were in 120 days late prior to the pandemic, prior to March of 2020. Those homes will be immediately foreclosed upon next, okay? Uh, after that, we could spend more time on this call, but that's the, the it's happening immediately, and I, I happen to know that process has already started in July because I monitor this certain thing, and it went up 10 X, the number that they're about to foreclose on, 10X uh, in July, where it was flat for the past 18 months. But the process is going to be, uh, you know, the same, you know, uh, documentation-wise process with a few other uh, notifications that have to happen. Um, and, and, and basically, it'll be pretty much the same, but I, I think a little bit more towards the fact that the banks have to quickly do this because it's been 18 months already. This isn't letting the homeowner be in there for, you know, 30, 60, 90 days. That's occurred for 18 months. The banks need their money. Yeah. And I think that, I think this has been a conversation I feel like I've had over and over again is, you know, what's about to happen. And as you just said, you know, for those who are watching on YouTube, if you're watching this after the live show, then, um, you know, it'll be interesting. We'll definitely, David, definitely want to have you back, not only for Clubhouse, but for the YouTube and Facebook and all the different um, ways to get information out there in September. I'd like to kind of have you back in about six weeks and let's have a, a chat about, you know, what's happening now, because it's definitely it's changing and I feel like it's changing really fast. And also um, I mentioned, obviously, David, I'd love to have you come in and um, co-host when we have um, attorney Michelle Adams. I've known her for, gosh, I think we've known each other for about 20 years now. And she is an attorney in the Maryland area. So Washington, DC, we call it the DMV, which is not the driver's license place. Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia are affectionately called the DMV, and she's going to talk about it from a legal viewpoint and specifically the jurisdictions that she knows. She doesn't know it, quite frankly, as widely as you do because she takes it from the legal side, and it's a little bit different of a process, um, which she does because a lot of times she's actually hired by the homeowner herself, but very interesting conversation. And again, the viewpoint of how things are going to have changed um, that's one of the reasons we want to have her near the end of August, right before, um, well, there's just going to be a lot of changes, a lot, a lot of changes. So definitely. She, she, she might be on. too, she might be too busy to come in, Jennifer, because, uh, you know, for her, that's going to be a really uh, peak time for all the result of the fact that that forbearance has finally ended. Uh, now, you know, those are ju judicial states. And what she's going to be saying is going to be so very important in a judicial state, because that means judicial means that the banks have to go through a a court system to uh, take the home back in a non-judicial state. All they have to do is post their name and, and legal description for 30 days and they have the house. So judicial, uh, and that, so that's going to be, I will absolutely be there uh, for that because she's going to have so much important information on the legal process uh, with it and stuff. So that'll be awesome. Well, thank you. And she did, she also um, did say we will do a presentation. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube, she's actually going to do a presentation, which I just find sometimes the visual side of it is also very helpful. But we're going to stream to Clubhouse because I, I like to make sure that we always um, are getting the information out as many places as possible. And so every Saturday morning from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern time, which is earlier for many of my guests <laughs> across the United States and Hawaii, um, I know it's much earlier, but we, again, um, it's live in Clubhouse and we're doing live on YouTube. So you can go back and, and watch this. And as you know, David, I'm just so grateful. Thank you for being so generous and making this your mission to not only do the do things 
things. Number one, to help people, but also to help real estate investors, to really help people in that way. But also, I'm really grateful that you have decided to teach others and to share with your private Facebook group, with your your coaching classes, all that stuff. And I'm going to remind people, um, if you text the word SHORT um, to 636-685-2990, you can get a free video with all of the slides, including many, many more that we did not go through today because we just ran out of time. That hour, it's amazing how fast that hour goes by. Oh my gosh. Thank you, David, for being here. Thank you very much, Jennifer. I appreciate what you do and getting this out to the real estate community. You're an icon in the real estate community, and we thank you for your service and what you've done for many, many, I won't say how many years you can say it, (laughs) but thank you. (laughs) Well, it is truly, it is truly my pleasure. And I do, I have that passion like you do to help others. And I know that one of the biggest things we can do is really educate others and, you know, empowering people as that old saying goes, I want to empower people. I want to empower, empower a fisherman to learn how to fish, how to do something rather than just handing them one fish. That's my, my, one of my passions. And so, as you know, I'm going to ask, um, John Lee and of course Linda as well if they'll unmute their mics and David I'll ask you I love to end with our um, that celebration of yay so I'm going to do the three two one yay 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 yay